Okay, we're going to use our RS HFIQ production tester and the production testware so test software to test a couple of uh, RS HFIQ boards. The software is already running. You can see that the, the only setup you have to do is set the path to the folder where you'd like to put the test data. And I'm going to eliminate all of the data that's in the folder right now. Uh, that path will be retained uh, when the uh, the software is, is off, so it'll always come back there. So first thing we do is see we say we want to start the test, uh, and it tells the first thing that I have to do is attach the uh, uh, serial number label, which I'll do on 150 here, and uh, put the little jumpers on the. There's a, a total of seven of them that I put on the board, and when I'm done with that. It says the next step is to mount the unit on the tester. It just uh, drops right under those screws right there. Then it says to connect the cables. And there's a total of, uh, there's a USB cable, there's the transmit cable, the receive cable, the antenna cable, and the power cable. Got them all connected. And now it says I can program the firmware. I already know that it's on COM5. You can use it the scan to find out what port it's on. And it'll always show up there. I do need to enter the serial number that I put on the tag. Um, when I'm done with uh, selecting the port, now I say program. And it uh, automatically uh, activates the uh, Arduino software that programs the Arduino. It takes a total of about uh, 10 seconds to do that. Um, when that's done, you just click on the window here and you can move to the uh, connect to the tester and the RSHFIQ. Uh, that happens automatically and now we're ready to set the bias. The first thing it says is to set VR1 fully counterclockwise, which I will do right there. Then the next thing it'll tell me to do is set the bias to 450 milliamps. And it displays it on the screen along with a little bar graph. So as it starts to go up, I uh, get a feel for where I am in the range. And anywhere in the green is close enough. You say you're done. And then uh, next thing you do is run all the production tests that we run. There's a progress bar, um, which for some reason when I'm running the uh, screen capture software as well as the test software, it doesn't update. But if you're running it on a, uh, just a regular machine, it progresses across. And you can see the lights on the RSHFIQ uh, cycling through its tests. Uh, this one has passed all its tests and it says it's okay for me now to remove it from the tester. And you can see that it has created a test file with all of the test data in it. Um, so I'll do that. What I do is uh, just remove the cables from it. And that one's ready to ship. I say OK. And the software automatically incremented the serial number and is ready for me to start the next test. So I said, tell it to start. I have to attach a serial number labels and the jumpers, which I'll do right here on number 151. Mount the unit on the tester. Connect the cables. Program the firmware. Open the tester. Set the bias. Turn VR1 fully counterclockwise. Adjust the bias for 
450 milliamps. Run the tests. We are done. That one's ready to ship. See, the whole process doesn't take very long. Thanks for watching.